Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Da 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 da. Hey guys, I hope that you're having a good night or a good morning wherever you are in the world. Today, uh, do something a little bit different. I wanted to read you a short story or a couple of short stories from this book. It's called The World's Shortest Stories. There is murder, suspense, or in love <laughs> stories and uh, it's a quick read I'm not going to read all the short stories but I thought I would read a couple that I enjoyed um, I was thinking of maybe making this a series where I read a book um, I wanted to first, but tell me what you think. I appreciate feedback. So, yeah. All the short stories in here are 55 words long, and so let's get started. There's no place like it. The president was rushed to the Arizona desert to greet the arrival of the huge alien spaceship. Peace, said the president. Thank you, said the very human-looking alien. We've been on a million-year universal tour. We're excited about returning home. Please visit, then good journey. No, you misunderstand, said the alien. We are home. First step. It's been three days since I had a drink. Recently, I learned about support groups. There's one for just about everything these days. I checked around and found a meeting. Last night was the first time I had the nerve to stand up and say, Hello, I'm Sandy, and I'm a vampire. Maybe there's hope. Patrol. On a side street, he sat, continuing his nightly visual. With the dome light on, he read headlines of the newspaper propped against the steering wheel. The radio blared, calling his number. The dome light went off, replaced by the red and blues. Hoping not to make headlines himself, he pulled into the night. Fast talker. 55, she whispered to him. 55 miles per hour? No. Words, 
That's all we've got. Hurry, please. Perspiration trickled down his neck. He stepped harder on the accelerator. But there's so much I want to tell you. So much that hasn't been said. Ten, she murmured. Ten. Six. Will you marry me? Yes. Kim. Our first grade class raced across the grassy field during recess. Kim, with the pretty smile, and the golden ponytail and I were fast. Once we raced across the yard, I don't remember who won. Kim died a few years later of some disease that I couldn't pronounce. I run with Kim, even now. Sachin. I can find my own dates, Aaron remembers saying. Playing matchmaker had been his mother's only fault. He winced now, as dirt hit her coffin. Who's that beautiful redhead? A friend of mom's? Tess would have come to the funeral, even without the promise she'd made to the dying woman she'd nurse during her final days. Two nights that pass in the chips. A second night that week, they pushed their carts into opposite ends of the chip and dip aisle. As they neared, their prepared conversational gambits dissolved into mutual definence. He pretended interest in chips, she formed absorption in dips. They passed in silence. Glancing over their shoulders, both thought hopelessly, next week. Winds of change. On the south wind, she came into his heart. From the west wind, he learned about her mind. The east wind taught him of her spirit. Then the weather changed, and all the wind blew at once, creating a great, rising, circular storm, and she left him on the north wind, his heart covered in ice. I'm sorry for my cringy facial expressions. The Dream As a child, she dreamt of wolves. They chased her each night for one year. She ran and was never caught. Later, she met a man, playful and protective, sharp teeth, soft fur. She still dreams of wolves, but now they lope through her dreams. She runs with them. Split personality. He was gorgeous. She was thrilled but puzzled. Why were your other relationships so short? She wondered aloud as they walked. He glanced upward. Well, I have this slight problem. Later, the detective grimaced at the ghastly sight of the young girl bloodied beneath the full moon. In the distance, a wolf howled. Final Witness Pandemonium erupted. The next witness was walking through the courtroom doors. Order in the court, the judge bellowed, cracking his gavel. All eyes focused on Tommy was sitting in the stand, his mouth open in shock. It's quite obvious now who'd killed his wife. No one.
Harry's love. He looked at her lying there in transpire sensuous curves, her golden glow, but it was her voice that really moved him, sometimes soft and sexy, sometimes wild with abandon. Whatever his mood, she matched it. He lifted her lovingly to his lips. Tonight they would make beautiful music together. Harry and his trumpet. <sighs> A new life. Nine years stranded on our forgotten moon of Uranus, the lone survivor of an interplanetary battle, I discovered intelligent creatures who took me in and nurtured me. I learned from them and grew to love them. My people came for me at last, but we hid from the exploratory spacecraft. Report Gamma Moon, uninhabited. Edmund's discovery. Edmund's car wouldn't lecture him when he forgot to buckle up. The instant teller's cryptid note implied his pin number didn't exist. The motion detector above the supermarket door refused to notice him. Troubled by these developments, Edmund sat in his empty apartment and thumbed reluctantly to the obituary column. I'll be damned, he said. Dragon tail. Muscles rubbled under the blue-green scales as the dragon stretched, then relaxed. Fascinated, I watched the creature freeze to perfect immobility. I stared until the man noticed me. With a glare, he rolled down his sleeve. Nice tattoo, I said, embarrassed. What tattoo, he asked, turning away. Under his sleeve, I saw something move. station. One ticket to hell, please. I'm sorry. All departures going south are booked up. Anything else leaving tonight? We have one bus heading in the opposite direction. Any seats available? Plenty. Very long ride? No. Not really. But you might want to take a good book along. I hear it's a mighty lonely trip. What the devil wanted? The two boys stood watching Satan walk away, the power of his hypnotic eyes still in their minds. Jeez. What do you want from you? My soul. How about you? A quarter to go home. Oh, want to get something to eat? Yeah, but I can't. Now I'm out of money. No problem. I've got plenty. forest. Deep in the woods, trees filled the sky. On an incline, I turned to see the white-tailed buck gracefully bound toward the ridge. 
grandmother had called this the season of deer rutting. Seeing one pass meant you'd travel soon. I left in the morning fog amidst sounds of rifle fire. Deer season had begun. Made to serve. He likes dinner at six sharp, she cautioned the new maid, and absolutely no beef. He takes dessert in the den. Draw his bath at eight, he retires early. And when will I get to meet the master? The maid asked as she stumbled backwards over a sleeping poodle. You just did? <laughs> Laughed the housekeeper. This was the only way such a blur of rage, bliss, and hurled toasters, as our time together had become. Appeal to fate, heads we'd marry, tails we'd separate forever. The coin flipped, thudded, skipped, and lay still, an eagle showing. We stared as it sunk in. Then together, best two out of three? salon visit. Anyway, the woman in the chair continued, his wife is so gullible. Bill always says he's going bowling. She always believes him. The petition smiled. My husband William loves bowling. Never used to. Goes all the time now. She paused, frowning. Then a slow, bitter smile emerged. Let's start on your perm. You're going to look unforgettable. That settles that. Tom was a handsome, fun-loving young man, albeit a bit drunk when he got into the argument with Sam, his roommate of just two months. You can't, you cannot write a short story. In just 55 words, you idiot. Sh Sam shot him dead on the spot. Oh, yes, you can, Sam said, smiling. Out of the fog. Lynn clutched her purse as footsteps approached along the fog-shrouded lane. Emily, a fellow prostitute, emerged. Any business? asked Lynn. Emily shrugged. Some. And you? No, not yet. Tis slow because of the ripper. Emily sighed. Seems everyone's afraid of Jack. Actually, the fool's name is Jocelyn, Lynn said, pulling the knife from her purse. People do think that Jack the Ripper was a woman. Accidents. Reginald Cook had buried three wives before marrying Cecile Northwood. Tragic accidents, he told her. How sad, replied Cecile. Were they wealthy and beautiful, said Reginald. They honeymooned in the Alps. 
Later, Cecile told her new husband, You know, darling, my first husband died in a tragic mountaineering accident. How sad, replied Justin Marlowe. And the cycle continued. Like two ships, he entered the elevator. Ground floor, please, he said. He sounds nice, she thought, but he wouldn't notice me. He noticed. He noticed her standing there, eyes straight ahead, but he didn't blame her. Nice perfume, he thought. As they parted, he lightly stroked his disfigured face. She continued counting the steps to the waiting van. I'll end on this one, since it's called Bedtime Story. Careful, honey. It's loaded, he said, re-entering the bedroom. Her back rested against the headboard. This for your wife? No, too chancy. I'm hiring a professional. How about me? He smirked. Cute, but who'd be dumb enough to hire a lady hitman? She wet her lips, sighting along the barrel. Your wife. <laughs> I love how a lot of the stories have these, like, zinger endings. And so, I hope you enjoyed them. There's a lot more left. So, if you're interested in the book, I'll leave a link in the description on where you can find it. Um, if I can find it. I got it in a little bookstore in Savannah. But, yeah. Thank you for watching. Um, for my next video, it's going to be a singing video. If you have any song suggestions, feel free to leave them. Um, but most importantly, if you have song suggestions for holiday songs or Christmas songs that you like, those would be awesome. Um, I'm for sure going to do a holiday singing video. Maybe more than one. I haven't decided. Um, and I also wanted to say thank you again for those of you who like, subscribe, and comment on my videos. It really means a lot to me. I really appreciate seeing um, those and my notifications. Uh, so yeah, if there's any books you want me to read, please leave them in the description. I love finding new things to read, even if I don't read them in this new series. I think I'm going to go ahead and do <laughs> the clock, <laughs> I swear. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much. I hope that you have sweet, sweet dreams. Stay safe, y'all. Have a good night. Bye. That song has been stuck in my head for weeks. <laughs>